Hello and welcome everybody, I am Socio Psycho, and today we look at Rainmaker by Frog Dice Inc. This is a match 3 game with RPG elements in it, available with Mac and Linux support. So let us first go into the options, and you have your volume sliders here. Now one thing I should say is this is a casual game meant to be played about half hour intervals, which is perfectly fine as the game does have that sort of feel to it with a sort of reoccurrence of come on back, you know, later on, but not something that's going to make you want to rush off to play hours of this game. The music in it is actually quite good and the sliders resonate fairly well. But the music fits the time frames and welcomes you back in open arms when you do come back without you feeling tired or exhausted of hearing the sounds. Now the quality, you have ultra good faster, I mean the game graphically is pretty simplistic, it doesn't look bad but it's what you can expect from a casual 3 match gem style game. All the key binds. Now let's go into manage cities here because you have an option to pick in between 3 different styles of cities. It consists of 5% trade coin drops, 10% troop health, 5% tower health. From what I've been able to tell, these are the only differences. Obviously you have graphic animational difference and this one passive buff, but I haven't seen any difference in the RPG element of the game. And I could be mistaken about that, but I have not experienced it. And you have your easy, normal, and hard. Now I've been playing on normal and I've found it to be a fair bit of entertainment. Some missions require far more attention and planning out than others. But if you want to play on hard because you're a three gem veteran, then that's what you got there. And then here you have your city profile, which is basically just the information upon everything you've done. Uh, combat wise, city and culture. It's just a breakdown of what you've completed. So let's jump in here and show you exactly what it means and what is for good qualities of a game and what are the bad qualities of a game. And so right here, as you see, is the RPG element. There is a set number of building structures which you can build. A farm, a lumber mill, and a foundry of a resource, as you see here, stone, wood, and food. Now, one thing that's kind of annoying in this is the continuation that when you get back to town, you have to upgrade the resources. You have to, as you see here, I'm clicking for them to harvest and it takes time. Now, the time issue is not the problem, but it just gets very repetitive to always have to come back and re-click on these abilities so the timers can go and after that amount of time, I'll gain 12 ore. And you say, well, okay, you know, it's not too horrible, I guess. But anyway, 500 wood here, 250 stone there for one building to upgrade it. And it just, it takes away from the entertainment value of a game. If it was a way to sort of have it passively giving you resources as time goes on, or by the more you play a mission, you get a set amount of resources, that would have been a better incorporation into the game versus this repetitive aspect. Now you also have a granary, which takes up your food and increases your population. And as you can see here, what these upgrade slots do is just increase for resource nodes, which population is a resource node as well, just increases the amount of resources you can have harvested, but also increases the time scale. When we look at the academy, now this is the interesting thing about the game as it's a three gem game, and you have spells which you can use into combat gem mode. Now each spell costs money to unlock more, you have to upgrade the ability, which costs resources. Now, one trick here, if because it takes time, so we look at, at the time limit it has here, it's going to take that long, and that might not be something that you want to do. A simple workaround is simply to exit the game altogether, go into your computer clock, and move the time forward. Then load back up the game, and it should be complete. So that is a workaround if you're like, I don't want to wait for spells, that's stupid. That's one way to do it. But each of these spells have a certain different aspect that play a role and really help in the game style. This quick flash fire will burn through 10 of your runes, creating magic bolts that destroy your enemies. And so we'll show you, show you these in combat here. And the town hall, you can get support, you can buy troops. The rock guys aren't all that useful, so actually we won't buy any of them. They throw boulders on a lane, but most of the time they'll end up throwing a boulder in a lane where not even enemy troops are coming at you from. But you have archers here, and you can see they cost that much purchase, 
and we'll purchase some regular archers, but I can't because I'm out of food now. And it goes into whole resources and it's a bit of annoying. Your armory offers special abilities, what these do, and you'll see more how they relate to combat in a moment here. But as you can see, Carl from Bone, this weapon not only stabs foes, it slows them down, and a great deal. So you have a multitude of different aspects which can help you out in a jewel game, which is nice. And over here on the side, you have your history, which obviously just shows everything that you've done. The achievements, the beastry, which is an interesting little thing. It shows all the monsters in the game that you've collected the scrolls for. And you can see exactly sort of an animation. It gets walking and, you know, just, just a little cute stuff that some information. But let's get into the meat of it. And there are 50 levels in this game. I'm up to 29. Now, after you complete a certain grouping, like I haven't completed this group right here. Once I complete this group, it'll open up another area of four towers. And as you can see at the bottom here, I know it may sound, seem like a lot to take in at first. And these are the special items and gears I was telling you about. As you can see, and these are the units you can take in a battle because you have troops. And here are all your spells. You can decide which spells you want to put down. And the way the, the, the cooldowns work on the spells is that the more rune completions you get, a set of three, then they will go up. Available in 18 matches. Well, this is available in 67 matches. So as you can see here, there's a, a, a difference in the spell quality and strength, as well as the aspect of what they do, which is really interesting. The game itself is what you're probably wondering about. As you can see, this is the first jewel outline. And I want to go over the different variations of puzzles and show you that. So you see you have this for starters. This is one type and locked make it a little bit more difficult to orientate with. And the enemies come from the left side and it's your job to destroy them because it is a tower defense style game. Different aspects and different maps offer different styles of difficulty. So you can see many in the area here is locked, and so it makes it even more, a little bit more difficult to unlock before you can have control of a battle and have a bit smoother, as well as there are broken parts here, which you need to get out and clean by a set of three, but because one's broken, cleaning it out will not actually fire anything against the enemy. So you can see there are different styles of maps, and these different styles equate a much more difficult gameplay element to it. As well as you have up at the top objectives that come and they want you to do sort of secondary objectives and they give you a reward for it, which is really nice, but you have a time limit upon what you need to do. So as you can see, there are different types of maps and it's very important to have understanding of what you're going into and you can pick up resources upon fallen enemies and that's how you get uh, resource nodes. So another interesting concept is that the fact that blocks are frozen and you can't actually click on them, you can't move them. There are ways to make them unfrozen, whether it be spells or a combination of runes. And there's also some troop units that you're able to get, which will help you in this as well. Such as a druid will defreeze some of these runes now and again and really help you. As you see there's a tower defense element, this is our health. On the left side, the green bar, is the tower's health. And on the right side is the wave completional bar. Now let's actually get in and show you some of the combat and show you some of the bosses because I feel showing you the bosses are very important. But one thing though I feel this game has kind of failed in is really because it splits down to a middle grouping. It, it welcomes people who are three match players but it kind of confuses them with a whole RPG element tower defense game, which that half, the tower defense and element uh, building, kind of welcomes more of the RPG -er or maybe more of the male groupings. As in my experience, females are more the sort to enjoy three style gems, and this kind of collaborates both groupings together because it has combat, it has defense, it has a challenge aspect of failure, you know, capability, not just, oh, well, you ran out of time, or oh, you didn't get high score. It's like if your tower gets destroyed, you lose, which is nice. But it didn't do a real good job in the description tutorial of describing for somebody who's new to, to match three exactly how to go about it. And the same thing to be said for the town RPG element. One thing that is of interest after you fight a battle and you head back to town, 
there are these policies that you need to set in place. Now, these policies have very subtle effects. They're more of a long-term implication upon how your empire is handled towards the end of a game, which I feel is kind of unfortunate because not seeing a few policies being implemented directly, like research this crystal, you know, what are you gonna do with this magical power? You get choices, research crystal. Okay, now your tower defense is, you know, 5% stronger, or you have, you know, slight little things that will help propel the RPG element of the story to be more relevant as you're actually playing through the game to want to sort of explore that element more. Because as it stands now, while the policies are interesting, the village aspect of the game is rather weak. Is the game fair? I think so. I mean, it's a three gem set, so there's definitely going to be some randomization and options where you just get screwed. But that is helped to be balanced out very well by the spells, even though you can still get kind of screwed over. The unit placements that they give you, they help out a little bit, but they aren't anything that really makes or breaks the game. They're just a little extra fodder for nothing to get excited about. And this is the type of game that would definitely be worth gifting to somebody who enjoys these styles of games. Or if you're looking for a casual 3-gem game, then yeah. But it's not something that you're going to really rush off and play for hours and hours and hours. And that's fine. You know, the game knows what it is. It has some issues with grindiness in the town and making the town not feel too relevant to the game. But then it kind of backs it up with the spells and tower defenders and special items that put it in this sort of limbo tug of war back and forth. So I recommend this game. Give your feedback, you know, let me know what you think about it and comment on the channel or on the forums. So I'll see you around. Thank you for watching. I have been Socio Psycho and I'll see you next time, everybody.